you haven't truly harnessed the full power of Bubble unless you're using backend workflows. There is a huge advantage to using backend workflows. So let's look at a few examples and discuss why it adds so much power to your application. Let's jump in. Okay, I've got a very simple signup form here. And backend workflows is something that at BuildCamp we use um, basically on all of the pages. We have a signup flow that has a lot of workflows and a lot of the signup workflow steps don't need to complete before a user goes to the next page. So let me show an example of this. So if I click on the sign up button, what are we doing? We're signing someone up, okay? And on step three, we're going to dashboard. But now there are a lot of steps missing. The sign up process might sign someone up, change some data, send me an email so I know someone signed up, signs up, send them an email, sign them up to the MailChimp mailing list, uh, hit a Zapier Zap to send a Slack notification to the BillCamp channel. There's lots of stuff that goes on, but there are only three steps here, which means on the front end as a user, they can progress to the dashboard a lot quicker by pushing all of this workflow, all this, this workflow stuff to the back end on step two. So what I've chosen on step two is basically um, a custom event and to schedule an API workflow. Okay, let's first explore quickly how backend workflows uh, interact with the front end. Okay, so we have a browser here and we have a sign up screen. Step one is to sign the person up. Step two, we've got to schedule an API workflow, okay, otherwise known as a back end workflow. It's basically the same thing. The schedule part just means that you can schedule it to run at a later stage. Most of my workflows run uh, at the current date and time. And then step three, navigate. Now, why is this useful that we, we send this stuff in step two? Because it means that there are things that need to happen when a person signs up to my application. Okay, this is just an example application. If this was a productivity app or a project management app, well, we'd probably create them a project in the background so it's ready for when they log into the dashboard. You know, we'd send emails to various parties, them a welcome email, us an admin email, and then we'd manipulate data in a myriad of ways, okay? I've, I've got a few more steps here, three, but the Bill Camp sign-up process, we have about 12 steps. We do all sorts of stuff. And that stuff, uh, even though it's happening in real time, I don't want those 12 steps to be on the front end. Because let's say a person is signing up on their phone. Okay, this is a, an edge case, but it's happened to me before. Someone's on their phone, uh, they are a passenger in a car, they go through a tunnel, they press the sign up button, and not all of the steps finish executing and they're just left in a tangle. Um, so it basically increases performance and it helps the user move from the sign up process to their for instance, their dashboard page much, much quicker because we're pushing other workflows to the back end and they can just run on the server in their own time. Naturally, they're running in real time as well, uh, but it'll be a much faster experience and a safer experience for the user if we push all the stuff to the back end. So whenever you have a process that doesn't need to execute for the user to continue their journey or to continue their, their functionality piece, push it to the back end, let it complete there while the user continues. Okay, so this is a much quicker journey for the user. So they sign up, uh, we push stuff to the back end, and then they navigate to their dashboard page, and the rest of the stuff executes on the server. All right, now to enable back end workflows, you have to go to your settings area and over to API. And you just have to check the box that says enable workflow API and back end workflows. Check that. Don't check the data API uh, because that's for a different purpose. When that happens, you will see that this option for backend workflows becomes available. Let me click there. Uh, okay. You can create folders for your workflows. I've just clicked on the folder pertaining to this tutorial. So what I, I went ahead and I clicked a new API workflow. Okay. You can uncheck uh, these three. Uh, that are important for this demonstration. And what we need to do is we need to connect the user on the front end to this back end workflow which runs on the server. So we have to pass data 
from the front end to the back end. And we do that through key value pairs. So I click to add a new parameter. I gave the key a name, I call it user, this can be anything, but naturally the type is a user. I'm sending user data through because I'll be emailing the user over here, okay? I'm sending user data through. So I can send any data through. I can say send a project data through. So here is basically all of my data type things. I can send anything through. But for the signup process, I just need the user. Once I have that, um, I can then just run a regular workflow like you would anywhere else, but adding the data looks slightly different. So if I make changes to something or create something such as a project, okay, if I create a project and I want to add a, a signee as the user who signed up, well then I wouldn't sign up the current user because now we're dealing with backend workflows. Now we're going to sign up the user that we pass through this parameter here. And the way that Bubble explains this is just by user, whatever we name this here. So I could say user signed up. And now we'll have access to user signed up. So this is just the name of the key value pair, okay? I'll keep it very short here. But that we know what user we're talking about. We're only passing one user through. And we'll go back to the front end in a second to see how we push this user through. But basically, once a user comes through this parameter section, then we can create things like a project, add them as an assignee. We can make changes to user. <laughs> How simple does this look? It's really cool. We can add them to trial. We can send them an email. I can send myself an email at BuildCamp. Uh, naturally, this would be, you know, uh, admin at example.com. So I can do all of this stuff without impeding the user's progress on the front end. So how do we push data through to this endpoint, basically, to this backend workflow? Well, back on the front end, here we have our button to sign up, okay? Once we've signed up a user, they then become the current user. Then the next step is schedule an API workflow. And this is what it looks like. So let me just delete these fields quickly. So it's gonna ask you to, um, Select the API workflow, so the one we created. That's called signup flow. Okay, I created that on the back end first. Go to the back end, create that flow first. Because we added a parameter with user data, it's going to show up here. So if I add something else, let me show you an example. Let's go back to our folder. Yep. So if I say that I also want project data to come through, if I also want project data. Here's the key project. If I go back to the backend workflows, we now see on this particular step, projects now appeared. Because the backend workflow is saying, pass me this data through from the front end to the back end. Okay. So the scheduled, because it's, the, and this is why it's called a schedule and API workflow. So we've chosen the API workflow. And then we've got a schedule date. So in a sign-up workflow, I would choose current date and time, but I can manipulate that to anything here. Okay, but naturally I want current date and time. And who are we sending through to that backend? Well, it's the current user. Okay, don't want project data. So I'm gonna go ahead to the backend and delete that. Okay. And then lastly, I can just send them to the dashboard um, while we finish off all of that work on the back end, which is faster and safer. The other huge benefit for back end workflows is security. If you're dealing with sensitive data, back end workflows is where you want to process that data, not on the front end. Okay, that, that's automatic, uh, huge uh, security gains there. Okay, so just to recap. So backend workflows is something you probably want to use on your signup flows and basically all over your app, as much stuff on the backend as you can. We would select schedule a API workflow. We would select the workflow. We would say, when does this workflow want to run? Current date and time. And we'd want to feed through the current user. Okay. If we go to the backend workflow, we're sending through the current user 
because we set up a key value pair here, which is which equals a parameter together of type user. And now we can, now that current user is pushed to the back end and we can use that current user in all sorts of steps down here, which can run independent of the front end. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I'll be making a series on schedule and API workflow on a list, recurring workflows, recursive workflows, all sorts of backend stuff that's all coming up very soon. So I hope, I hope this was a good introduction. Get comfortable with backend workflows. This is the power of Bubble, trust me. This is where you want to be working. So good luck.